Uh, it was back in uh, the 1930s that uh, cannabis earned a, a bad reputation. Uh, in the United States, the uh, Marijuana Tax Act of 1937 uh, prohibited uh, the, the cultivation of this plant. Uh, there uh, was, uh, as it became uh, popular as a recreational drug, there was a, um, a campaign uh, to put a stop to what was viewed as a menace to society. And uh, some of you may uh, be familiar with uh, this uh, propaganda film, uh, Reefer Madness, and some of the other uh, uh, pulp fiction that went along with uh, cannabis here during the 1940s. Uh, the Reefer Club and Marijuana Girl, these are, these are novels um, portraying uh, the evils of a dangerous uh, illicit substance. And um, there were uh, racial and socioeconomic um, implications that went along with this uh, vilification of cannabis during this period. And as the, the drug itself uh, increased in popularity, uh, it's no surprise then that uh, during the 1960s, when a whole generation uh, was encouraged to reject societal norms. Uh, Timothy Leary uh, 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 preached to college students to turn on, tune in, and drop out. And at this point, cannabis was really picked up as a countercultural icon to engage in using this thing was to really stick it to the man and take, you know, and adopt a different, you know, a different, uh, uh, different lifestyle. So what exactly are we talking about uh, when we're talking about marijuana? Um, we're talking about a, a plant species that, like our own, has uh, male and female uh, individuals. Uh, the female plants produce these uh, seed, these uh, flowers that will bear fruit, that will uh, produce seeds. These female flowers are, are covered with tiny little microscopic uh, uh, ball and stick shaped hairs, like little little mushrooms. And these little uh, uh, globes that sit on top of these stalks are um, actually glands. You know, just as um, we have glands uh, that secrete things like sweat, plants, plants have glands too. And into the glands on the cannabis plant are secreted these chemicals that only cannabis plants produce. Uh, and they're called cannabinoids. And uh, the best known of these, here's the chemical structure of it, is uh, delta-9 tetrahydrocannabinolic acid, or THC for short. And this is the, this is the molecule that uh, induces a mild euphoria when it's ingested. Now it was in 1970 that our federal government uh, passed the Controlled Substances Act, which defined marijuana as any part of this plant species, whether it has any THC in it or not. There were two parts of this plant that were exempt uh, from the definition of this illicit drug. And um, one was the, and, uh, the seed, as long as it was incapable of germinating. And this is because the seed is um, uh, very popular with birds, and it's used in bird seed. Also, the fibers taken from the plant uh, were exempt from this definition of marijuana. But you couldn't produce either seeds or fibers uh, without growing the whole plant. So since this time, it's been necessary to just import these products to the United States. And they've been imported legally ever since 1970, but we haven't been growing the plants here um, for fiber or seed. Um, rather, um, Many folks have been cultivating uh, marijuana uh, illegally in the United States uh, uh, for many years. Uh, it became, by some estimates, a $25 billion uh, annual illegal industry in the 1990s. And some of the statistics um, from law enforcement suggest that uh, as many as 800,000 Americans criminally charged, uh, billions spent on, uh, on marijuana enforcement during this uh, uh, during the, the 90s and, and, um, and even still today. But um, big changes took place in California in 1996. And maybe if I go into full screen mode, it'll make that a little bigger. Um, this was um, uh, by popular referendum a vote uh, to pass medical marijuana legislation in California. Um, 
the medical board there recognized um, conditions that might be treated with cannabis, uh, uh, terminal cancer, chronic pain, spasticity, a uh, number of conditions. And it was this Proposition uh, 215 in 1996 that basically um, brought pot growers and dealers out of the closet and branded them as caregivers and then uh, registered participants in the program um, uh, are the patients. Now since that time, we've had an explosion of medical uh, cannabis laws all over the United States and there are now 25 states plus the District of Columbia that have medical cannabis laws that are in direct conflict with federal law. Uh, it's really kind of amazing uh, that this would happen and when I got into this research I never could have expected that we'd see such a uh, quick and dramatic uh, turn of, of events. So this really is a plan that has captured a lot of uh, public interest in recent years. And taking an even bolder step, uh, the state of Colorado in 2014 recognized that most of the um, participants in their medical uh, cannabis program were just using the drug recreationally. They just decided to, um, um, the, um, they passed a law um, uh, legalizing recreational marijuana in Colorado to anyone, state, resident, or visitor. And um, uh, it was uh, within just four months of this program that they did a couple hundred million dollars in sales and collected uh, ten million dollars in, in state tax. And that, that captured a lot of uh, a lot of public attention. But what drove me to study this plant really initially was hemp, and as I'll explain, uh, the possibility of bringing hemp back as a crop alternative in my home state of Minnesota. So, you know, what is it, what is hemp, and how is it different from marijuana? Um, that's really the basic, uh, the basic question uh, that has driven much of my research. And um, you can recognize that within this one species of plant, uh, cannabis sativa in the botanical Latin, uh, there's lots of variation in the chemistry and the, and, and the appearance of the plant, but generally speaking, these uh, marijuana cultivars, these varieties just, uh, that are used for uh, 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 recreational drug or for medicine tend to have much higher levels of THC than hemp plants that are grown either for fiber or for the grain from the seed. Um, we have been able to grow hemp in the United States uh, for quite some time because of our Controlled Substances Act and the federal definition of hemp and marijuana as members of the same species. And as I said, it doesn't matter how much THC is, it, is in it, it's still cannabis as far as federal law uh, has been concerned until quite recently. Um, as many in Kentucky will recognize, there are uh, uh, very good reasons why we might want to grow hemp. Uh, for instance, Domestic demand has been increasing at over 10% a year. Uh, the market sales are now estimated at about $570 million from last year. That's still a pretty small market for an agricultural commodity, but uh, it's one that's growing. Why is it growing? Uh, there is particular interest in uh, the seeds as a, a source of oils for uh, cosmetics, skincare products, uh, and also as food. Um, it turns out that the balance of omega-3 and omega-6 fatty acids uh, in hemp is just is ideal. It's a very healthy, uh, very healthy source of, of fat, um, and there's uh, great nutritional value in hemp seeds. They're also quite tasty. Uh, you can make a lot of things out of the fiber, uh, not just rope and paper and cloth. You can mix those fibers with concrete or with plastics to make extremely durable uh, and renewable uh, kinds of materials. We might also be interested in uh, reducing our dependence on foreign imports, given that we're, we're buying all these materials currently from Canada uh, and China. Uh, the interest in bringing uh, hemp back as a crop alternative has been there for some time. It, uh, it's been blocked uh, by uh, federal authorities. Uh, I'll give you the example from North Dakota, uh, near where I live. The state passed a law back in 2006 uh, uh, legalizing hemp cultivation, but the, uh, uh, the Department of Agriculture uh, was denied a permit by the Drug Enforcement Administration. Uh, 
farmers sued uh, and lost that suit in 2008. But then, um, along come your senators, uh, McConnell and, and, and Paul, uh, who uh, introduced a provision uh, in the Agricultural Act, the Farm Bill of 2014, it was, it was just a remarkable feat that actually a, a, a law was passed uh, in Washington. Um, and even more amazing uh, that that law included uh, uh, a provision defining industrial hemp as distinct from marijuana based on its THC level. And that THC level is set at uh, less than three-tenths of one percent. And anything falling below that threshold, this act uh, said uh, could be grown by a Department of Ag or an institution of higher education uh, to study this plan. And so, uh, for the first time in uh, many, many years, uh, hemp was grown uh, uh, legally in the United States, uh, first uh, here in Kentucky. Uh, it's interesting how that came about. Uh, the uh, Kentucky Department of Ag uh, 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 ordered a shipment, but it was detained by officials at New York International Airport here, uh, and uh, it took a, a lawsuit against the Department of Justice <clears throat> for this seed to be released. And what was particularly interesting to me is, you know, I've worked on obtaining permits to do this kind of work for many years, and it usually takes at least a year to get any kind of action. Well, once a lawsuit was filed against um, the DEA, uh, Kentucky received its first hemp research permit in less than a week. Um, and uh, this enabled uh, agronomists like uh, Dave Williams um, at UK uh, to plant uh, hemp on state land uh, in their ag experiment station and start studying it. Now, currently, um, uh, this the program uh, is now in its uh, third year here in Kentucky. There are now um, 160 uh, registered participants. These are farmers, companies, uh, uh, hemp researchers, and there's over four. And there's 4,000 acres uh, planted this year. It's still quite small on the landscape, but it's uh, it's come a long way from just three years ago. Uh, the folks who are engaged in this program. Um, many of them are not basic researchers like me. Many are farmers interested in making a profit. And uh, along comes another uh, McConnell Amendment in the Omnibus Bill of uh, 2016 that basically tells the Department of Justice to back off and not interfere with anybody who's growing cannabis less than three-tenths of one percent THC content, including um, anyone who's transporting, processing, selling, or using the hemp that is grown or cultivated in accordance with the Ag Act. So what's happening in Kentucky right now is that folks are actually producing and marketing hemp products uh, in Kentucky, and those products, according to this provision, um, can be sold within or outside the state. 